Hello, and welcome to another Leathercraft video. Today we're making cowboy arm guards based on a video from Richard Black. So I followed his video, I've made a pattern, I've cut that out of my leather, and I'm adding a stitch line 1 8 of an inch all the way around the outside. Here I'm changing to my wing dividers, I'm adding a second line that's going to be deeper within, and then I'm going to add a third line even deeper still. So by the time this is all done, you're going to have three lines all the way around the outside at various depths. You can use any spacing you like if you'd like to follow along. And here I'm going all the way around making sure my grooves line up. Uh, make sure your piece is wet when you do this, it'll help us stand out. I'm wetting the piece again, now I'm adding our border stamp. I've used a camouflage and a vayner stamp, alternating all the way around. Here I'm using a bone folder over a craft aid to get my pattern transferred over, and I'm using a swivel knife to carve all my lines. Make sure your piece is wet when you are carving to make it pop that much more. You may have to wet it as you go. Here I'm putting just green painter's tape on the back of the piece to prevent it from stretching as I tool it. The tools I'm using for the tooling portion of this are various craft tools from Tandy Leather. As we come to the end of the floral tooling portion, you'll see me wet down the piece next as I prepare to do the basket weave, which I do by drawing a line straight across and then uh, alternating stamping on each side of the line, which will blow through real quick in a moment. I'll have a link to a basket weave example in the description. All of our tooling and stamping done, now I'm going to bevel both sides of the piece all the way around the edge, so that's the front and the back. You can also remove the green tape at this time. So with the beveling done, now we can move on to our dye process. So I've painted with dyes using Phoebe's Professional Show Brown color in all the recesses of the floral. And here I'm using a 2 to 15 ratio of English Bridal Pro Dye to just regular rubbing alcohol. I've done a few coats of this, alternating directions as I go. Once it's dry, you're going to give it a buff, make sure it's all completely off there. And then from here, I'm using a wet sponge brush covered in Pro Resist, which I'm applying like so. I should have applied this in a circular motion, but it still worked out well. So if you are following along, make sure to do it in a circle. Once it's dry, you should have a nice gloss like this. Now we're going to move on to the antiquing process. I'm using the Feebing's Antique Paste in dark brown. It's not the gel, it is the paste you want to use. You get better results this way. At least I do. Here's the label of what it looks like. It's the only color I use, I swear by it. So once you have that applied in all the recesses, you're going to let it dry five minutes or so, up to you. The longer you let it set, the harder it is to rub off. Here I am rubbing it off. Uh, when you do rub off your antique, you don't want to press down too hard. You want to leave it in all the recesses like I am. I am just barely scraping the surface. Once your antique is set, I let it set overnight. Now I am going to just seal my piece using Phoebe's Neutral Resoline. I do one pass uh, vertically and then one pass horizontally. You want at least two coats. I always recommend more if you really want to seal in your antique. Once that's dry, I go around the outside of my edges again using a 2 to 1 ratio of dye to alcohol. Give it a little bit of a darker color. You can also change colors if you like. Now you can slick your edges using gum drag or beeswax, whatever you prefer. I use a buffing wheel as well to speed up time. Now we're going to punch our slots for our wrist strap and add our holes for our lacing. Now we're dyeing our wrist strap and then we're going to cut it to size. So I dye both sides of it and then I'm going to antique it with some olive oil and then I'm going to seal it with more Pro Resist. Once the die has dried, we're going to bevel both sides. This will make it easier to insert into the holes we cut for the strap. And 
here's the olive oil I mentioned. You just run this over both sides. I forgot to do this on the main body of the piece, which is okay because it still turned out well, but if you do do this, uh, make sure you do it for all the pieces so that way you have a more similar color. Here's the pro resist I mentioned. I'm just using a rag to apply it that is damp. Uh, works better than using a dry rag. Once this is dry, you're going to punch all your holes for your buckle as well as the buckle groove. Set your buckle with your rivet setter, thread it through the openings, and lace everything together. Here's the finished piece. Really happy with how this turned out. And thanks for watching. We'll see you down the road.